Hello and welcome back to 14 Cool Apps Built with GPT-3. This is part four in the series where I share cool stuff people are building, people are thinking about, interesting use cases people are finding for GPT-3. As some of you may know, GPT-3 was released last July and every day somebody finds some new use case for it that nobody knew about before. Myself included, I've been using GPT-3 for months now, and every day I learn it's capable of doing something new. Nobody knows all the things it's capable of doing, and so it's really exciting. I love sharing and making these videos. Let's get started. So in this first uh, use case, somebody has made something which essentially combines GPT-3 with some old school classic machine learning and rule-based logic to extract information from invoices. So the you know the, the invoice went in and on the right it's sort of summarizing the important information. I wanted to share this just because this is a cool example of combining GPT-3 which is the latest and greatest sort of machine learning model with some of the old school approaches to machine learning like rule-based logic. And it's just cool to see GPT-3 combined with sort of different kinds of stuff because I think it's really powerful and produces you know really interesting outcomes and robust solutions. So very cool. Uh, next, I wanted to share. So somebody uh, benchmarked uh, human copywriting performance versus OpenAI GPT-3 performance, and they found GPT-3 copywriting was 7% better. It performed 7% better than the human, human written copywriting content. And so if you don't know, copywriting is basically, it's a fancy way of saying doing writing for marketing for a marketing department so it's like you could so when you're writing the text for a landing page or for a billboard or for a magazine ad that's called copy or copywriting um that's just how it is in the marketing world it's called copywriting and so they found that gpt3 in some cases performs better than a human copywriter and i just thought this this use case was cool because it's not just showing gpt3 use in the real world it's cool because it's showing gpt3 use in the real world and getting real world results and so the marketing version or of the uh conversion rate of you know seven percent better than what was there before than the human version that translates to more clicks, that translates to more engagement, that translates to more app installs, or ideally it translates to more money. So maybe in this case, GPT-3 made 7% more money than what a human came up with, which is really exciting to see. Uh, next, I wanted to share, so somebody made something which you can give it a, you know, in a text box, you fill out a description of someone's face and below it, I guess using some kind of AI model or some GAN, it actually generates the faces. And I mean, this is this just this is just a cool example of combining again GPT-3 with some classic AI stuff like GANs. This is a little bit eerie, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> but still cool. So I thought I'd share. Uh, next, this is just like a fun uh, use case. So somebody asked GPT-3 to come up with, you know, high growth jobs by the year 2025. You know, high growth job titles or whatever, and. Some of the ones that came up with were like Reddit teacher, ASMR content curation specialist, <laughs> uh, you know, dark net vendor, meme strategist. And, you know, these are just, you know, really funny. I encourage you guys to, to check it out yourself, like all the different titles it came up with. But I wanted to share just because, you know, GP3 is awesome. Like you see all these use cases, you see all these apps, all this potential. But I just want to also say GPT-3 is just fun. It's fun just to mess around with it and see what it comes up with. You know, this is a great, just fun thing to do. Fun thing to ask GPT-3 and I love the results it came up with. I wouldn't mind being a upvote, downvote training specialist in the future. Uh, next, I wanted to share, so somebody created a GPT-3 powered uh, chatbot and Obviously, I think, you know, GPT-3 is an order of magnitude better than any other AI-based chatbot service. And so I wanted to share that because it's an obvious fit. Uh, I just, I just, where I'm concerned about it is just I've had difficulty having GPT-3 sort of stay in line. Like, don't talk about anything inappropriate. Stay on brand, like to a brand's message, you know, like their style, like Coke might have a different way of speaking and communicating with their customers than somebody that a company like Oracle, right? And so all of these sort of issues are still outstanding. And so I wanted to share this use case just because I'm interested to see where this company goes with it. How are they going to address these problems? How are they going to solve it? Certainly they're thinking about it more deeply than, than me. But in any case, 
using GPT-3 as a customer support agent is, is not just an exciting opportunity, a great fit, but definitely the path forward. So very cool use case. Uh, next, I wanted to share, so somebody made uh, a GPT-3-based tool, which you essentially choose a function and then choose a kind of question you want. And on the right, GPT-3 generates some interview questions. And I think this is just a cool use case because it's, it's just like, instead of you coming up with questions and spending your time worrying about that, you can have technology do it. In this case, GPT-3 come up with the questions. And instead, you can focus on actually conducting the interview, focusing on the other person's body language, you know, listening to what they have to say, and just focusing on the conversation. It doesn't really make sense for people to come up with questions. I think it's an awesome fit to have technology do it for us. Uh, next, I wanted to share, so this is another example of just writing marketing copy. So on the left, somebody, you write a feature and on the right, GPT-3 generates the benefits of that feature. Um, and I wanted to share this just because I've written marketing copy in the past and I could tell you coming up with benefits <laughs> for features is actually, it's like hard. And over time, it's, it's like more and more difficult to be original or come up with something different or really look at the look at the worldview from the from the customer's perspective. And so describe a feature from their view and like the, the ideal underlying benefit from it. And so this is just a handy use case of GPT-3. And uh, also, I think it'll save people time. And finally, I like some of the benefits it's coming up with like all in one bookmark manager let's let's see what benefits so um you know organize your bookmarks sync between devices back them up securely like these are good benefits because i think it also demonstrates gpt3 has some understanding of the real world like what would you want from a bookmark manager what would you want from a simple food delivery app and it's sort of listing those benefits in that context which is really impressive that it can do that. If you had told me a year ago this is possible, I wouldn't have believed you. Next, I wanna share, so uh, Bram Adams, awesome guy to follow on Twitter and YouTube, he made essentially something where it sort of enhances the to-do list. So you sort of, in this use case, you write the task and underneath GPT-3 estimates the perceived difficulty of completing the task, right? And this is pretty cool. Task estimation is a really hard problem. And also, you know, managing a to-do list can be tricky. Often you come up with this great to-do list, but you don't actually know how long stuff is gonna take. Having something like this can sort of uh, streamline that planning process and keep you more focused on what's actually possible because you, now you understand the perceived difficulty. Um, this is also cool just that GPT-3 is able to answer that question, like how per, how difficult it would be to do it. It must have maybe some understanding of the real world or tasks or how to the steps required in each of those tasks. Uh, very cool use case. Uh, next, so Bram also made a, essentially you give it a single sentence and hit submit. <laughs> And using GPT-3 and VR technology, it generates the entire world based on the description you gave it. This is an awesome demo. And I think it's it just like it's this, something like this has been the sci-fi world building dream for a while now. But it's really exciting to, to see it come to life uh, with the technologies like GPT-3 and the VR technologies that we have now. Very cool demo. Uh, next, I wanted to share, so somebody, so if you're familiar with uh, Humans of New York, it's this Facebook group, uh, sort of photography-based uh, page, as, as well as like, a, I think a best-selling book now, where essentially you sort of photograph a person and you sort of tell their story in this really intimate way. And it's just amazing the people you meet on the street, how interesting their stories, how interesting their stories are. Now, some of these stories are kind of sob stories that make you feel sad. Other ones are just quite you know, compassionate stories or stories which, you know, really pull at your heartstrings. And so somebody made, essentially they combined GPT-3 to come up with the text and some kind of AI GAN model to generate maybe the faces and it sort of creates uh, a, a face and a story through AI. Now, I'm not gonna lie, like this use case is kind, it's kind of flirting with like a black mirror <laughs> kind of, you know, te technological reality. But uh, I still I still think it's cool. Um, 
And uh, it's exciting to see that AI is, is at this point now that, you know, we can generate these pretty high fidelity human life stories. Uh, next, uh, it's, this is just a cool use case, but essentially you can describe the vibe that you're feeling right now. And uh, using GPT-3, it can parse or interpret it and then find and generate a Spotify playlist respective to your vibe. And this is just a cool example of... Um, this is a cool example of using GPT-3 and its somewhat understanding of the real world to sort of translate that in natural language for humans uh, into the kinds of technological outcomes that we want. Uh, a vibe is certainly a you know an elusive thing to say. It's certainly broad, but it's awesome that technology is at a point where maybe it might start understanding what me what we mean even when we say a vibe. Uh, and then finally, uh, Bram, I, one cool thing he, he dropped, I think, later in December was this uh, sort of library um, for GPT-3. And what's cool is it's, it's sort of a wrapper on the existing GPT-3 API, and it can do a bunch of sort of advanced GPT-3 GPT techniques like chaining or asynchronous requests. And I wanted to share this just because it might actually make the process easier for GPT-3 development, but also it's exciting to see this kind of open source development in the GPT-3 ecosystem. I think it's an exciting step. I think it's great that more people are working on this space. The more tools we build, the more serious this ecosystem becomes. Uh, this is also cool, essentially, like uh, this is an example. So you can ask GPT-3 to uh, you, you give it a keyword and it sort of suggests books related to the keyword. Uh, GPT-3 is trained on a lot of text data. A lot of it probably includes book data. Uh, and so this is an awesome use case. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for book recommendations and sort of like the vibe example I showed you earlier. Sometimes I'm, I'm, in the, I'm vibing, I'm in the mood for a certain kind of book or maybe I'm searching for a certain kind of life lesson or some kind of insider knowledge on some life situation I'm in. So this app is pretty cool. It has a lot of potential. Uh, next, this is our final demonstration. I wanted to show you this very cool app that basically you give it a description of your maybe your startup idea, hit generate, and underneath it generates a whole landing page hosted as a web application for you. Uh, now, unfortunately, this is what it gave me, but the landing page is still cool, and this is probably where GPT-3 would have filled out the information. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the site is down right now. But I wanted to share this because I think this is a good example of using GPT-3 to and combining it with other technologies to literally make people's lives easier and, and save them having to do so many steps and save them a lot of time, right? And this has kind of been the dream for a while now too, that I should just be able to enter a description and technology should just actualize and create that description and that vision that I have. Uh, and so to, to reduce the number of steps for somebody else, like coming up with the copy, laying out the copy, creating the landing page, hosting the landing page, writing all that code, making it like a sleek design to save people from having to do all of that. Uh, this is a tremendous example. And I, I think, you know, this sort of um, idea has, has a lot of potential. And I think a lot of people would, would love this. So anyways, uh, this is the tool company in a box.ai. Awesome tool. Highly recommend you check it out. Anyway, so that's all I had uh, to share today. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Different. These are I've shown you 14 different examples, use cases for GPT-3. And as you know, I love making these videos. I love following along with the GPT-3 ecosystem. And so if you're interested in following along with my journey, as well as some of my own use cases I've discovered, please consider subscribing and, and liking this video. Uh, it really goes a long way and means a lot to me. Thanks so much for watching.